Welcome back. I'm Gary and Carlin, Mosses Creek Outdoors. I'm glad you could join me on this episode here as I build this custom, all handmade buoy knife. This knife is around 13 inches total length. So let's get started. <laughs> I thought we had some helpers that was going to help out. Uh-oh. That means we'll have to do everything all handmade by ourselves. Jeez. I'm going to go through the process to hand make, fully hand make, a buoy knife. Uh, I've got a pretty good sized knife going to be coming out here on this round, on this episode. Um, I got a about three fourths of a sawmill cutoff blade uh, borrowed from a friend of mine. Uh, I'm going to cut a cut me a blank of steel off the side of it and make the blade out of. And I got a piece of red stag antler here that I'm going to make my handle out of. Uh, I think I'm most likely probably going to make my handle off of the end of it right here. Um, I could cut this off at, you know, five inches and split this antler in the middle and make it a solid tame all the way to the end. But I'm thinking about, this is a really straight round piece of horn. I'm thinking about actually drilling into this piece and actually putting the tang of the buoy knife down into this piece of red stag. But uh, we'll see how it turns out. Um, first thing I got to do, I got to cut my blank of steel off of this uh, sawmill blade. I got it marked off. Uh, about two inches wide and I think the piece is about close to 14 inches long right now but that's not how long the knife's going to be I think the knife's going to be about maybe 13 13 and a half inches total overall length when it's finished somewhere in that neighborhood that's from the tip of the blade to the very tip butt end of the handle and we're going to make a uh, bolster that's going to go down at the base of the blade uh, that's going to rest on the top of the handle. So let's cut the steel out for the uh, blank that the blade's going to be made out of. Alright y'all, I've got my blank cut out. There's the blank out of the saw blade. I'm going to make the uh, knife blade out of. It's two inches wide by 13 and three quarter inches long. Which it'll, it'll come down in size a bit uh, from the, the handle end down here. Uh, the handle or the, the tang, I'm going to cut a tang on this one uh, that's going to go into the handle. Uh, the tang is going to be about five inches long, uh, but I may shorten that up by maybe three quarters of an inch by the time that it goes into the handle. 
uh, here's the piece of red stag. I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut a, I believe, a, about a five and a quarter, five and a quarter to a five and a half inch piece, straight piece right off of the end of this stag. That's going to be the, uh, be the handle like that. And looks like I'm probably going to make my tame about five eighths inch wide going in there and this uh this sawmill cutoff blade is thicker than like a table saw blade i was gonna make a buoy knife out of a table saw blade but uh only table saw blades i got is uh 10 inches i can't even going across the center of the blade i can't get enough length that way for what i for the style knife that i'm wanting so uh uh this this blade is it's thicker little it's a little bit thicker just enough to tail thicker than a full eighth of bold eighth of an inch so i'm gonna flip around right here and i'm gonna go on the uh table saw right here and i'm gonna cut my handle or my grip off of this red stag horn All right, I've got my my pain marked off on here. I gotta lay it down here now. Cut it. Out. All right, there's the tain. The next thing I gotta do, I gotta I gotta draw the. Uh, the curvature on the or the shape that the blade's gonna be up through here. We'll really start slicking her up here in a minute. We'll get in there on that belt sander with that special sanding belt. We'll start bringing the shine to her. Get closer. That's ready to go to the uh, to the belt sander. Things starting to shine up.
believe I'm going to touch it anymore. I think it's time to do some hand work on it. Slick it up and even shine it more and get it uh, even slicker. Oh, she's sharp. I mean bad sharp. We get it honed down on the rock. It'll be something else. It's just amazing how much time goes into it. My opinion is, you know, making other parts of the knife other than the blade, there seems like to me there's not near as much to it. But really, to, making, to say making a knife, the key or the secret or the big question is, can you make the blade? If you do, I guarantee you in, in a handmade knife, in a lot of cases, making the blade isn't an easy process. But I believe we got this one looking pretty, pretty, pretty good. For what it's going to be or what it is, it's going to turn out looking absolutely amazing, I believe, when it comes out. You know, I'm going to have, I'm going to end up having probably about, I don't know, two days of work tied up in this knife. But I believe in the ending, she'll all be worth it, the way it's going to look. I gotta cut me out a bolster to go across it right here, here in just a few minutes. get this on here and we'll be about ready to start fitting our handle there it is Looking good. Looking real good. Alright, we're going to drill our first hole in our handle where our tang on our blade's going to go. That's our start, and we'll just have to uh, widen that out just a little bit. Our tain is a little bit wider than that. Our tain is actually, I think, five-eighths of an inch wide. There's our blade. Done got the bolster on there. There's our handle. I, I mean, that's just almost perfect look at that just barely over a quarter inch I can drive that on up with a rubber hammer once I put the uh, epoxy in there I'm on gonna, I'm gonna fill that handle uh, with, with epoxy but uh, I want to thank a friend of mine for some help helping me out on the materials I usually have some materials I uh, but he uh, he had the piece of steel or the saw blade that I 
that I cut this steel out of for this blade. And then he had this piece of red stag horn and uh, got it out of that. I didn't have, I, I had some steel, but I didn't have nothing long enough to, to make a blade like this. Um, I don't make knives all the time. You know, I've sold two or three knives. Uh, you know, again, my, my uh, main profession for so many years is uh, making game calls, but over the years, every once in a while, when, you know, when I kind of get caught up or whatever, I may make a knife, but uh, I'm not making this one to sell. This one, I'm keeping for myself. I'm gonna carry this one in the, in the woods with me. But I mean, it is really, really sharp right now. My uh, buddy, uh, Rodney Poindexter, he's gonna, he's gonna make me a leather sheath for it, a handmade sheath. Uh, it'll look real good and get it in that. So, all right, I'm finally ready to uh, put this handle on this knife. Um, I've got some uh, five minute epoxy here. I'm gonna get this mixed up and I'm gonna shoot it to it and we'll uh, get this thing put on. <clears throat> This uh, handle is going to have a steel pin going through the top of it as well. Uh, it's not going to be held in by only the glue. I'm just putting this basically down inside the handle to seal the inside up down in there. And, of course, it helps a lot about holding it anyway. But I'm going to have a steel pin, like I say, going through the antler, through the tang on the inside, and all the way out the other side. Tell you what, this is some messy stuff. You want to keep this epoxy off of your hands <clears throat> if all possible. And don't let any of it get on the outside of your handle if you can help it. I got a rubber hammer here <clears throat> that I'm going to tap this thing with. Man, I tell you, that sure enough looks good right there. And sharp. I think I cut myself two or three times. A little small times, barely enough to tell. Poked myself good with the tip of it uh, when I was doing uh, the last work on the edge out here. But uh, I'll let that sit overnight. Welcome back. I'm going to have a final uh, look at this finished knife, and I'm going to show a couple of more knives here uh, to go along with it. There it is. It's, it's one more of a work of art, I can tell you. A really nice uh, buoy knife. Uh, it measures right at 13 inches long. <clears throat> extremely sharp I've had it on a on a wet rock it's really sharp uh, <clears throat> uh, once more uh, the red 
red stag antler for the handle. And that blade is a sawmill uh, cutoff blade. That's what it's made out of. Here's the uh, sheath. A friend, of, a friend of mine, Rodney Poindexter, he made this sheath. So that, that makes it really nice. Looks like that. But uh, I'm very uh, extremely proud of his job on that sheath. That's that's nice, you know. That that makes it fulfilling at the end, you know, on a on a finished knife like that. Have a sheath like that, put it in. I'm gonna show this knife. This is a knife that uh, that Rodney made for me as a gift. Uh, three or four years ago, maybe something like that. I think he also made that blade out of a sawmill cutoff blade. And he put a brass bolster on there. And of course he made the uh, the handle out of a that's a white tailed deer antler there, and he left the, the base up on the end of it there. But uh really uh pretty knife. Matter of fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna start carrying this knife with me more than uh than I have already, and I'm gonna start using it a pretty good little bit. He when I talked to him on the phone the other day, that he said he gave it to me to use. I told him I said, well, you know, when somebody gives you a, a handmade knife as a gift, sometimes you know it's it's hard to use it. Or, uh, I've also got this this little tiny knife. I made this uh, kind of late in the day, the other day, just fooling around. You know, I had a little tiny piece of metal laying there uh, by one of my machines, and that all that is is just one of the antler tips off of the deer. That little blade is about an inch and a half long by a half inch wide. So just a little small knife, really, really small. It feels good in the hand. But that was just like a little quick uh, throw together. But uh, one thing I wanted to say also is, I mean, I can tell you, along with uh, Rodney, could tell you the same thing. When you set out, on a job to make something like this and make the whole thing yourself you're going to find out in a hurry what true handmade in quotation uh, custom handmade work what a chore it is real quick you're going to find out what it's about you're going to find out how long it takes how much time you have to put into it when you're you know, truly hand making something. And if you take your time and you focus and you know what you're doing, you know, you're also adding extreme high quality into that product, whatever that it may be that you're that you're building. But you know, there's there's so many folks out here, they will never know and they will never have no idea what's involved in something like this when it comes to the work you know you gotta of course yes you you gotta know what you're doing or you're not gonna make it happen you know it's it's kind of like the same like with with me or Rodney either one you know it's things that we've done in the past over the past years different things you know this is we've done this and it's led up to something else and we've done that and it's led up to something else and just over the years we have developed, you know, enough experience to be able to, you know, to put something together like this. And all I can say is, in the ending, you know, it's something, it's very, very rewarding. Uh, I, I told my daughter the other day that when I showed her this knife, I said, you know, you, right here's something that you will probably have uh, long down the road, you know, after dad's gone. So I'll pass it down and That'll be hers one day. So I guess I guess I'll do the same with uh, with Rodney's knife also. Uh, it'll be it'll be handed down, you know, within the family. And I appreciate you tuning in on this episode involving the build of the Bowie knife. 
So until next time, I encourage you to get outdoors and find what interests you out there, whatever that it may possibly be, whether it be hunting, fishing, trapping, uh, researching history, just spending any time outdoors. And I hope that you enjoy it as much as I do. So I'm Garen Carlin, Mosses Creek Outdoors, and I'll see you next time.